Good afternoon, folks. This is the Real Life Real Estate Investing Show, where we talk about real life real estate situations, where we bring you real life real estate solutions. And uh, I got a I got a superstar on the show today that's going to bring the heat. So strap it on your seat belts. Uh, he's going to give us some great information. We're going we're going to dig into the the secret compartments of the mind that is known as Chris Monroe. And uh, listen, brother, I want to thank you for being on the show with us today. I want to thank you for agreeing to take the time out and share some of your wisdom and your knowledge with us as it relates to investing in real estate. So, um, I, I, you know, I, I had a bio of you, but, you know, we had that conversation, man, like you, you're open book. And I don't want to limit you to what I have on this paper. So uh, share with the folks who you are, man, and, and what you do. Uh, and, you know, we'll get more into, you know, a lot of the stuff later on. Yeah, yeah. First of all, I'd like to say thank you for having me on your show. I appreciate, uh, you know, the warm hospitality and uh, you know, the open communication that makes a big difference. Uh, about me, I'm Chris Monroe, born and raised in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, I did a couple of years in the military, U.S. Army combat veteran. Um, I got out of the military, you know, looking for jobs and things like that. Say, well, there's really no job. So I became a 100 percent serial entrepreneur. So I went down the rabbit hole of trying all different type of stuff. Finally found a couple of businesses that worked um, and ventured my way on and, you know, personal development, learning more about getting myself together, get my mindset right and stumbled upon a video by a guy with a big beard named Max Maxwell walking around talking about real estate. I said, <laughs> Hopefully, what's that? Jumped into the jump into the water, see if I can swim, watched about 200 to 300 videos, learned everything <laughs> I can learn and took massive action, got in the game, got about 17 wholesale deals in my first year. And I already have 10 properties and I just hit my two year anniversary in real estate. So I'm a living example that the sky isn't even the limit on what you can do when it comes to creative real estate, whether it's wholesaling, whether it's other creative type deals or any otherwise things. But I'm an open book as well as that. But like I said, I'm basically a serial entrepreneur. So I do a lot of endeavors and I have multiple streams of income. You, you know, listen, I, you, you, you gave a, a true, true story of what it, i mean you said something you said a whole lot of great stuff but you said that one major thing that a lot of people miss when looking at doing anything in many cases but specific, specifically related to real estate you said you took massive action um that's one of the major th major things that i see that people have issues with when they're looking to get in, involved in real estate and you know they get a mentor and they, they you know they hire somebody to teach them how to do it which is great um but the one major thing that that is missing, like even, you know, obtaining a lot of information is is key as well. But if you don't take action, it's all for not, you know, so that's that's great stuff, man. And you said you only been doing this for two years, man. And listen, you making some of us that's been around for a while look like we we, we the amateurs. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's business, you know, so like I said, my background in entrepreneurship and business kind of helped me catapult. So when Absolutely. I came into the game. I started with maybe about a thousand bucks. So, you know, I just dumped it in there. I said, I'm gonna get me a good phone services, like call real so I can record my lines. I mm -hmm. went in and got a virtual assistant within the first two weeks because I knew I wasn't gonna do cold calling and I'm not gonna right. lie to myself and say, oh, I'm gonna get on here and get hung up on, cussed out and all that other stuff, which I do do some cold calling, don't get me wrong. But mm -hmm. the mass brunt of it goes on to my virtual assistants. And I knew that, you know, we needed certain things. So I came in and set it up as a business, not as just a side hustle, you know, a lot of people try to hustle. You know, we've been hustling our whole life, but where are we gonna get rich at? That's what I want to know. Right, listen, that 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 is a song. I think we should we should become the run DMC of singing that song, bro. Because uh when you said setting this up as a business, another major key that people miss, you know, because I think the, the unfortunate thing, and this is where I say people get mis misconception and miscommunication on what is really involved in the business of real estate investing. Um now there while there is opportunities to get started in this business with no money and no credit i think because that is the primary thing that people are sold on when getting into this business they often miss that it is a business right, right. and even though you don't need money and money or credit you got to know how to do what you're doing and even though and just because you don't need money or credit doesn't mean that you can't you don't have to run it like a business so again man great great stuff most definitely. Yeah. You know, that's the thing. You know, I didn't get in the hustle. Like, like I said, I've sold cell phones, pagers, uh, all type of stuff that you shouldn't be selling. I right. mean, you know, I hustled and hustled and hustled. And before you know it, it's like, wait a minute, 
You know, like people talk about strippers or talk about uh, drug dealers or talk about people like that. That's an untrained entrepreneur. They just not have to, not taking that time to work on their personal development, get that mindset right, step into the real game and actually learn the real strategies, how to talk to people, how to negotiate, how to make deals, how to be a, a problem solver. Because once you master that, the doors are open for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you said you said untrained entrepreneur. And, and that's only in the sense that they haven't gotten in the lane of something that can be, you know, continuously sustainable, I say. Mm -hmm. And, you know, th those businesses, you know, for them, they sustain themselves for a certain amount of time. But you get old. <laughs> Most definitely. You know, yeah, five of time ain't, ain't waiting on nobody. Five, right. I got a little great girl coming in right there. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely. So, yeah, so that's what the whole thing is. You know, I I'm big on personal development, getting your mindset right, getting around the right type of people, having the right influencers in your uh, circle, you know. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. If you're hanging around four bums, you'll be the fifth. So I don't want to be the fifth. I want to be the fifth one that's getting rich. I want to get out here and get this money and, you know, have that generational wealth and something you can actually pass on. Because, you know, the rich don't work for money. I don't know if anybody uh, read that book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. That's rule number one. The rich don't work for money. And we all have been programmed to go hustle and work hard. No, I'm working for assets. I'm working to go get something that I can stretch out over time to pay me time at the time at the time again, whether I'm woke, whether I'm asleep whatever you can't be woke if you wind up broke so i say you know do the thing you know what i mean so listen perfect 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 segment man listen listen i want to talk about all of what you just said but you gave me a perfect segment to talk about stay woke tell us about stay woke man i mean perfect name as well <laughs> yeah so that's my hashtag i stay woke i actually own hashtag people don't know you can actually uh, buy hashtags you can own them so yeah i actually own that hashtag hashtag i stay woke um, it just simply means, you know, I'm aware, I'm conscious of what's going on, whether you're talking about politics, whether you're talking about, you know, different things they told us, going to school, getting a job and doing all this different stuff. The programming is real. You know, I, I tell a lot of people the painful part is you almost have, you know, you get, you got to delete almost, I would say 25 years of your life. Your first 25 years of your life, you've been told so much junk that you got to knock all that away and relearn it again that's painful and it's hard to say and even think yeah. that man the first things i've learned the first 25 years of my life was mostly wasted i gotta start yeah. all over you almost <laughs> have to to get your mind right to be able to navigate this system and navigate this you know the situations that we find ourselves in here you know today so a lot of people don't want to do that because that's painful like oh but i grew up knowing this and they say you can't do this and this is illegal and you can't do that you don't know what you can do you know the, the only limits there are, are the ones you put on yourself so I never tell people to put these limits on yourself. Keep your mind open. You know, just because something sounds different to you or new to you from the beginning, that does not mean that it's not true. That does not mean that it's not real. Because people still believe that wholesaling itself, oh, that's illegal. Oh, you can't do that. And ain't nobody going to give that house for $2,000 and you go sell it for $10,000 and never did anything and never took title. People don't believe that stuff is real. But I'm here to tell you that it's real. You know, just like buying houses, no money down. People say, you can't get a house, no money down. Keep saying that. I bought about three of them that way. No money down, just closing costs. You know, a thousand bucks, twelve hundred bucks out of pocket. Get a whole house with financing in place. You know, you just a whole, whole house. Huh? The whole house. <laughs> and I try to keep that thing. As, you know, and we'll go deeper into that if you want to, as far as creative terms and strategies and stuff when it comes to real estate. You know, that's just one little segment of this big mass thing of staying woke. You got to know what's going on first absolutely absolutely yeah so we're definitely gonna get into that you know i want to get into the details of kind of how you do what you do um but you know back to back to again you know talking about staying woke one of the major keys of doing what we do as well is mindset you know you and, and that's that's something that you know as it relates to personal development if you don't associate yourself with the right people like you said you know um and going back to you know when we first met you know, I, I met you on doing a show with uh, with Alvin, I believe AJ. Uh, we, we did a show with him, mm -hmm. and you know, as and, and this is this is the thing for me. You know, I, you know, I, I've been doing this for quite some time, but I'm always I'm, I'm a student first before I'm anything else, and I'm always looking at ways that people may do something, even if it's slightly different or a, a whole lot different than I am, and that helps me become educated. So from the time we were we were on that panel, man, I've been studying you. I've been studying uh, Miss Jackie Jackson, who actually is going to be on the show next week. Um, Sierra Nicole, you know, I mean, all of you guys that were on that panel, man, I was just like, wow, I get to sit amongst you all and 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 learn, you know. And 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 again, you talk about learning and relearning and unlearning certain things. 
you know, when I learned real estate, you know, talking 22 years ago, some of the things that I learned were some things that I probably should have never been doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I learned and I'm un and I had to unlearn and relearn a whole bunch of stuff, man. So, you know, that's why I thought it was really absolutely, absolutely necessary to have you come on and share what you got going on, because I was impressed. You know, I was blown away. I'm like, you know, I want to at least tell people that I know him. <laughs> exactly. And that's the thing. You know, the more you learn and, and, and learn different stuff, whether you're talking about real estate or anything in life, you realize you really don't know nothing. You can absolutely. do all this study. You still don't know nothing. Absolutely. You don't even the surface. <laughs> You didn't even scratch the surface on how much information that there is on different topics, whether you're talking about the body, food, or science, or whatever you want to learn about, flying an airplane. We don't, it doesn't matter. There's so much information, and this is the information age with the information superhighway that we're streaming on right now. So yeah. I tell people people to go ahead and take advantage of this thing called the internet and uh, parlay. You know, a lot of people put social media, oh, I'm getting off social media, it's bad. Yeah, because you are doing the wrong thing on social media social media is the best thing ever created. <laughs> this little thing right here that little smartphone this thing make money you make Absolutely. so much money i got two of them so right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm I mean? you. <laughs> there you go you see what i'm saying you gotta have your systems right you know and things like that it makes all the difference in everything but yeah you know learning stuff is you know and that's why i even go by the student master teacher i'm the student and a teacher i'm always going to be a student of life I'm Absolutely. always going to be an open-minded person to go ahead and learn something because a fool could tell you something you didn't know. Definitely. Definitely. And I, I listen, I definitely prescribe to that. I, I you know, hundred percent agree with that. Um, you know, that's why, you know, when I, when I look at, you know, having the conversations about, you know, what, what we're doing in the business and how long we've been doing it, I don't wear that as a, I mean, yeah, it's something to say because I've been through a whole lot of the things that have happened. Um, but again, I mean, like you said, you've been doing it for a couple of years and I have actually learned some things from watching your videos, you know, so, you know, it, it, you know, it doesn't mean that, you know, less than I know, you might know something different than I know that mm -hmm. might apply to something that I've been doing a certain way for a long time. And it, it might work out a whole lot better if I tried your way. You know, and I'm so. glad I even, you know, me coming into real estate. See, I came into the game virtual. A lot of people are like, oh, well, how's the COVID-19 affected your business? Right. <laughs> I was virtual already. I, was already. I came into the game virtual. So when people say, yeah. I'm going to right now, I want to sell my house. Let me run out to the house. No, I don't do that. I talk to people, have a good conversation, you know, see what's going on with their situation, see a little bit about the condition of their property and things like that before I run out to the house. I'm not running out to no house if, it, if there's nothing there. You know what I mean? I want to know if this person is serious and really willing and able to actually sell the property. If they're not able to do all that, what am I even running out to the house for? You know, that's just some of the basic mistakes that I've seen people make time and time yeah. again. I got to see the house. I ain't got to see nothing. All right. I need to do is see that way. Paperwork. Paperwork. The paperwork. <laughs> paperwork makes that paperwork. And if the, everything go through good, I'm going to get my check, baby. That's all it's about. Getting the multiple checks over and over and over and over again from work I did last year. But see, listen, I, I guess I guess the one of the things I have to start pre-warning and forewarning people that come on the show with me is is when you start using great punchlines, I'm going to rob you of that. <laughs> no, no, okay. Just give me a shot. I said, yeah, I got that from my bro, Chris. I, I got to take that. You know, I, I, probably, I probably formulated it over time from a bunch of stuff. You know what I mean? He said that paperwork makes that paperwork. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so the first time I use it, when I use it again and I'm not with you, I give you credit for it. But after that, you know, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna say it's mine. <laughs> there you go. As long as you deliver it right. So give us some practice and then boom, you gotta drop it heavy. So it's good. <laughs> It's all Great good. stuff, man. Great stuff. So let's let's get into it, man. Let's get a little more into it. So two years and to go from start to where you are now i mean because you're doing some major stuff man i mean i want people to understand that you know i'm i'm, I'm thoroughly impressed by what you're doing C kind of give me that that kind of walk me through where you started from to where you are now um and 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 it takes consistency and confidence and obviously you have both of them going on so give us a little more insight of you know how you run your day-to-day -to, -day to to get to the point of doing what you're doing now so yeah, so when I first started off, like I said, I made a, you know, a lot of people say, don't get a VA, but you know, like I said, I came in with a business background. So if you came from a nine to five background, it may not make sense to the actual person. But for me, knowing that I was coming in to start a business and not me work it, I want to work on the business, not in the business. So I definitely want to, you know, have a team because, you know, real estate itself is a team sport. 
So I actually had, you know, VAs got on the phone. I taught them how to, you know, screen different sellers and how to pull it, pull lists, uh, how to skip trades, how to talk to people, all that different stuff, the front end grunt work of the business. Cause it ain't going nowhere. Somebody got to do it. Definitely. Preferably not me. So I let them do the initial calls. I trained them up to do all of that stuff. So, uh, I, I first started out straight, strictly wholesaling, you know, my first, uh, so like I closed my very first deal, August of 2018. And like I said, I went on to close 17 wholesale deals in my first year. Um, I did my first creative real estate transaction in December of 2018. I still own that house today um, where I actually bought a house subject to the existing financing. Um, we still make plenty of money on that house today. It cash flows and ain't, it's been one of the best things I ever did. I need to find like 20 more like it because on that particular deal, um, well, I'll go into that deal later, but I'll give you my journey. I guess I don't want to make it too long because I got a lot. So, Listen so, to your thing, man. Listen, we we rocking with you. <laughs> so, like I said, I went all the way through. Uh, started out wholesaling. Started saying, you know, basically, when you're wholesaling, you're marketing to attract motivated sellers. Whether it's doing bandit signs, whether you're looking on Craigslist, Facebook, OfferUp, LetGo, all these different types of sites. Uh, whether you're doing active marketing like Facebook uh, ads or Google ads or putting your search engine optimization, getting your website up on the first page things like that, all these things to market to attract this motivated seller. Uh, and during this process, I'm noticing that some people say they owe a hundred thousand on the house and the house worth 110. That's not a wholesale deal. We can never wholesale that. So a wholesaler can't ever touch that. And I come to find out in my studies and learning real estate going deeper than just wholesaling, I found out that I can actually make more money. I'm gonna say it again, more money than I ever could on a wholesale deal on one little house that keeps paying me month after month after month after month. Like I said, my very first deal that still pays me today, uh, almost two years after the fact. Um, so I, I just the, the natural progression of wholesaling and attracting these sellers, I found out that I was not able to help everybody that came my way. So I had to learn some other strategies. I had to get some other tools in my toolbox. I had to get me a wrench. I had to get me a socket wrench. I had to get me some pliers. I had to get some other stuff so I can change them tires and make some more money. <laughs> Vice grip, that's right, old school. So I went on and did that. So I learned some creative strategies. Uh, how to buy houses, little to nothing down or no money down and different things like that. Sometimes we put some money down. That's not a big, it's not a bad thing to give somebody something for the house because, you know, they've been paying on it and living in it, but we don't give them much. I'll say that, but we do solve a major problem, a major problem for the bank that's going to foreclose on them, a major problem for that seller that needs to sell that house and a wholesaler can't help them, a real estate agent can't help them because of fees and commissions. Um, they need a creative real estate investor, somebody like me to step on in and know how to maneuver these deals, how to structure these deals so we can actually solve a problem for a person and, uh, you know, provide value to the community as a whole. So um, just going through that journey, doing that, that just made a big difference in the way I even see things. I don't go into any deal knowing, oh, it needs to be a wholesale deal or I can't help them. Right. No, I go right. into every deal asking good questions. I'm a big advocate of that. If you watch any of my videos, you'll see that all I talk about mostly is being a good question asker. If you ask good open-ended questions and allow that seller to tell you what their situation is, what do they feel about certain things, they'll tell you how to close them. Absolutely. Closing them becomes so much easier when you actually take that time to listen to them, listen to their problems, and come up with a solution for their problems. And uh, just going through that over time, I've uh, evolved and evolved more and more and more again. And now I got students all over the United States that's closing deals as well that I actually train on how to do these type of creative strategies as well. Because like you know, it's it's not one thing for me to know it, but it's it's one thing for me to make myself successful. But the thing is, how many others can I make successful as well? Right. That's how you make an impact on the planet, in my view. Definitely. But uh, basically, that's what we're doing right now. Great stuff, great stuff, man. Listen, I salute you, man, for all you you're accomplishing and what you're doing, man. And you know, it's it's certain it's it's certain people that you see that are doing this that you know I I you know I endorse you a hundred percent because. I know if you're doing it the way that you're doing it and you're teaching other people to do it the way you're doing it, you know, that's less people that I got to worry about that's messing it up for everybody. <laughs> mm, you know, now you're so, hitting some heavy now. They, yeah, right, right, right. That's why they changed the law in Illinois where you got to get a, a yeah. license to do wholesale deals. And, and I think Oklahoma, somebody trying to do it or some other place, but you know, it's like always something, man, you know, and when you have untrained people, going out here just dabbling and dibbling in real estate and don't even know the actual basics, it can cause a problem for everybody for a great business that makes a lot of money. We don't want to mess that up. 
true, true, real stuff, real stuff. So tell us about it. Let's talk about the deal that you were talking about that you bought in, in 2018 um, that you're going to sell me when we get off the show. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll send it to you. It'll be a high price. I still right. need to pay for the right number. But uh, so basically, uh, you know, through the marketing, like I said earlier, so we ran a ringless voicemail campaign where we actually uh, send out these voicemails to go to people's phones and it automatically goes to their voicemail without ringing a person. So it's like an advanced uh, thing, uh, a little bit better than a cold call. So we did these ringless voicemail drops on a campaign on an absentee owner uh, deal or list. We basically went through. Uh, somebody responded back, said, yeah, I would love to sell my house, uh, but I don't think you can buy it because of how much I owe on it. Mm -hmm. So I text back, when is a good time to talk? That's the big thing when it comes to text messages and all these other things. Get on the phone with these people. I, I mean, I, people try to negotiate over text and all that. I don't do that. Please don't do that. Get on the phone with these people. So I said, when is a good time to talk? She said, I go to lunch at 1130. So 1130, guess where I was at? On that phone. On that phone, we got on there. We started talking. I got a little bit of background. She told me about the house, the four bedroom house over here in South St. Louis County, right up the street from me, not too far. Um, so the house ARV is about 165. She owed about 135 or something like that at the time. And so I'm thinking, well, you know, well, you can't wholesale it. Like I said, you know, that's not a wholesale deal, but the house was no reason to do a wholesale. So I asked her, you know, would you consider taking a monthly payment until we pay you off in full? Well, I would consider that. Tell me more about how that works. Great, great. So I told her about how that would work. The loan will stay in your name temporarily until some time in the future until we get it cashed out. But in the meantime and in between time, we'll catch up your loan, which she was three months behind at about uh, 800 bucks a month. So she owed about 2,400 bucks in back payments, about to lose this house. It wasn't in foreclosure yet, but she was three months behind. Wow. So about $2,400 in back payments and then about another $1,000 in closing costs. So I acquired this property for about $3,400 out of pocket. This uh, house work, I said, worth about $135,000 is what she owed. And it was ARV was about one sixty five. dollars So I had a little bit of equity. So it's not a big, bad thing or nothing. But And I had money from wholesaling. So I'm like, $3,500? $3,400? What's that? Hurry up and close this deal. <laughs> so her payments were about $800 a month. Mm -hmm. um, so I put it under contract, started marketing, things like that. And I went on and closed the deal about a couple of weeks later. So lo and behold, it took me about three weeks to sell this deal. Like I said, I'm out of pocket $3,400 to acquire a property. Uh, payments are about uh, 800 a month. And I found a tenant buyer. That's what we call them. That's our exit strategy. A tenant buyer on a lease option deal, a lease with an option to buy type deal, where we actually um, had a person that wanted this house, that loved this house. He saw it on Zillow or somewhere, I guess. He said, I want that house and I got 20000 down. You do. Let's hurry up and get him up in this house. So I had a lot of people hitting me up like, oh, I got three thousand, two thousand. I'm like, eh, I don't really want to mess with y'all. So lo and behold, this guy came along. He went on and met me at the house. He looked at the house. He saw the house. He wanted the house. And like I said, he had twenty thousand down. Mm -hmm. So he we went on and set it up to close through a real estate attorney. We closed all these creative tra transactions through a real estate attorney, mm -hmm. all of them, hundred percent for multiple reasons. Um, so we went on and did that deal with him. He put twenty thousand down. And he paid a thousand dollars a month. Wow! So I mean, it cash flowed about two hundred bucks at that time. I think it was like two twenty, something like that, cash flow on the deal. Because like when we sell these deals on a lease option, we pass on all the responsibility of the maintenance and repairs to that end buyer. We don't fix on houses. We don't manage property. We don't do any of that tenants, toilets, or termites. Any of that high cost, high uh, costly entanglement type stuff where we got to deal with all the problems of being a disgruntled landlord because I don't ever want to become a landlord. So I'm not a landlord by any means, but I do own a lot of property that has people that pay money over what we owe on the underlying debt. So lo and behold, we closed that deal out with him, uh, closed it out with that original seller. Everybody's happy. We got a person in their house and they've been in there, like I said, since December of 2018 and they've been paying every month. Now, lo and behold, on top of that, I want to add a little nugget on top of this. So like I said, our payment was 800 bucks when we first got it. When we bought the house, she had an owner-occupied policy on it, which is an insurance policy that's for somebody that's living in a property. When we switch that insurance over to a non-owner-occupied policy or a landlord policy, or you know, with somebody that's not living in the house, it dropped the payment down on the insurance. So we got a reduced payment. So now our payments on the property is about seven hundred and fifty dollars a month. Save us fifty bucks a month, which could be a lot of money over time. Definitely. Save us fifty bucks a month. So we're paying seven fifty a month on the underlying debt. He pays us. One thousand dollars every month, so we cash flow two fifty on a property. We have no money in the deal, remember, 
right. let alone forget saying I buy houses. I got paid to take a house when you really look at the big real, picture. Real talk. Real talk. I got twenty thousand down. That's my thirty five, thirty four hundred dollars back plus mm -hmm. you know plus profit, and I've been getting cash flow month after month after month after month for almost two years now on that same little one house, and I got ten of them like that. So you know that was the best, one of the better ones because I got twenty thousand down. I haven't been able to get that kind of money from anybody else yet. I have had some to do twelve thousand, seven thousand, stuff like that. But I haven't got another twenty thousand or more yet. I haven't beat that. And that was my first one. I'm always fishing for that first deal that was nice like that again on right. that same little house. But like I said, a wholesaler can't touch it. Most real estate agents couldn't have helped her because they had you know the house needed a little bit of repairs, which that tenant buyer took care of. And uh, you know everything's good, so it's the goose that lays the golden egg. That's why I preach and teach creative real estate. Absolutely, great stuff, man. Great stuff. And listen, that you know, I've had I've had some deals like that. Um, you know, I, I I typically try to get a whole lot more, uh, but you know, that's that's a great situation to be in, man. To be able to get a property where you put a little bit of money down, and then somebody comes along and gives you a whole lot more money to be able to you know, help with sustaining. And then you don't have to do any repairs. That was the question I was going to ask. Were there any repairs that had to be done? Um, but you said he took over the responsibility of doing that as well. And this house didn't need anything. You know, I mean, it was cosmetic cleanup. I mean, it didn't need anything, to be honest. Maybe really nothing, you know, very light, like less than 5,000 if you want to say, if you just want to do something. Now, that's another little thing I'm going to throw in here, too. This same tenant buyer that gave me 20000 down, guess what he did? What's that? Put somebody he, went in, he went in this house and put another fourteen thousand dollars renovate my house. <laughs> Can you believe that? He went in there and put a brand new kitchen in, wow. put in a brand new bathroom, put in new floors throughout the whole house and some other stuff. I said, "Damn, this is the gift that keeps on giving." And remember, this is still my house. I, my trust is on you know owns the property. Yeah, uh, you know, we have the deed to the property. He's just a tenant buyer until right. he gets you know some type of financing or something. Which I can't convert him over to a traditional or some type of wrap or something too, if I ever wanted to. But right now he's just a tenant buyer, and I did make a mistake on that deal by making it three years, you know, which I found out over doing time that I don't want to do that long, one and a half years, two years, stuff like that. I don't want to make a deal with an end buyer for three years because, say, if the taxes go up or you know life happens or something, I might yeah. kill my cash flow. You yeah. know what I mean? Because yeah. if the taxes go up or something on it and it's a hundred dollars more or something. And then I ain't, that's messing up my cash flow. I don't want to stretch out a deal that long with somebody. I'd rather do, you know, a year, year and a half, two years, stuff like that. But I don't want to do it. I haven't done any more deals up to three years anymore with anybody else since that deal there. But you live and you learn, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, that's great. I mean, you know, so in certain areas, it depends on what, you know, what the buying patterns are for, for people in different areas. But listen, that's a great situation, man. And now, or do you have them on any, have this, this person on any type of, um, track to be able to obtain financing or you let them handle that on their own and if they choose to uh, exercise the option you leave that up to them so yeah it's it's actually legally 100% up to them it, we, they signed off on documents saying that we don't make any promise or claim that you'll ever be able to qualify for a loan mm -hmm. uh, we, we do refer them to other people who can help them with credit repair and all that type of stuff but I don't really get into that business like I say I do real estate I solved right. the problem for the seller, the problem for the buyer. They have a beautiful house. They're like one block away from the school that their kid goes to. That kid can walk to school. It's literally, I mean, it's a win-win for them. Now, um, when it comes to uh, repairs, like I, like I said, I don't want to do any repairs on any of these properties. All of that stuff goes on to them, and we let them know that right up front. Check it out. Bring your contractor. Bring an inspector. Do whatever you need to do because this is your baby. Once we close this deal out, it is your baby to deal with, not mine. We don't even have the capacity to property manage or deal with repairs, maintenance, and things like this. So, you know, a lot of people love that. You know, they want to go in and tinker yeah. on houses. You'll be amazed at how many people who would love to have a fixer up handyman special that they can put a little bit of money into and a little bit of sweat equity into right. and make that house a home. I love to let them do it because I'm not going to do it. I'm not the handy type. You know, I'm a thinker brain. I go in and figure out strategies, figure out solutions, solve right. problems. But coming up to turning a wrench, I'm probably not the one to be doing it. So I'd rather let them figure that out as well as their credit. I don't do credit repair. I let them figure that out. I will give them some resources. Don't get me wrong. I'll mm -hmm. shoot them in the right direction, help them out any way I can. But none of that brunt falls onto me at all, ever, or our company. Great stuff. Great stuff. I mean, and that, you know, that's the thing. Like you said, you do real estate. And, and you know, I salute you for that as well, um, because that leaves you open to being able to be consistent in what you do. You know, um, and great, great strategy, man. Now, is this something like, 
well, t t take us back to wholesaling. Um, when you do when you do a wholesale deal, now of course you come across these types of situations. But are there any wholesale deals that you've seen that you just didn't want to sell and you kept for yourself, or you know the number just made sense for you to keep it for yourself? You ever ran into something like that? Uh, not normally. I mean, well, the thing is, so we, so this is how our system works. When a, a lead comes in, they get the same set of questions. They're right here. Mm -hmm. Same set of questions, no matter who they are. They always ask about the condition of the property, always asking about, you know, their situation, how much they owe on it. Would you consider taking a monthly payment until we pay you off in full? Mm -hmm. The same set of 25 to 30 questions on every intake that we take. We don't know what they're going to say to those questions. Some people say, yeah, we're open to terms. Some people say, oh, no, all I want is cash. I don't want none of that other crazy stuff. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. And if they want all cash, we give them that low ball offer. Take that low ball offer. We don't have no problem giving you that. But that's, you know, that's the worst way to sell your house, but we will buy it. We don't have no problem doing it. We can buy it or wholesale it or do whatever we're going to do as far as that. Uh, but if they do say they're open to terms, we, we shoot them a terms deal, you know, which are going to make more money over time because we can pay more on a property than we ever could on a wholesale deal. On a wholesale cash deal, you're going to get nowhere near retail, plus, my, you know, minus repairs, minus any other things that we feel to make it a safe deal for us. But typically, you know, unless you're using somebody else's money, I would even tell nobody to use cash to buy a house out of their own pocket. I don't feel like that's a good strategy. I feel like that's uh, not smart. That's not woke, what you see up there if you can. That's not, that wouldn't be the woke way to do real estate. <laughs> you know, use other people's money, other people's credit, and know how to strategize and make these deals happen. That's what I say. Absolutely, absolutely. It's all about leverage. Um, you know, shout out to somebody else who's, who's uh, a quote I probably stole, uh, brother Will Roundtree, leverage everything. <laughs> everything. Leverage. Why are you stressing out over this when you can leverage and do the work once and let it pay you time after time after time again? Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's the thing. You know, I, I was actually just having a, a consultation with a client just a little while ago. We were talking about, you know, you know, she has a, a lot of cash that she wants to get into buying properties with. And I said, would you ever consider buying 10 properties instead of one? <laughs> you know, because you can, she has enough money to put down on 10 properties and leverage those, those funds over funding from different sources to be able to obtain the property. So, you know, exactly. I, I, and I tell people all the time, you know, it's three ways you can get into real estate. Three main ways that I can think of. One is the cash buyer being a big cash buyer. I mean, you got a lot of money sitting in a bank account doing nothing with it, earning less than 1%. And another way you got it up in a 401k trapped until you reach some certain age in the future. And, you know, but you can do that. That's a choice. One way to do that's cash. The second way is that credit, having that 780 credit score or more, whatever they're requiring these days to go leverage your credit. That's one way to do it. But most people can't do that. Right. Uh, two thirds of the marketplace or three fourths of the marketplace cannot qualify for a loan. They just simply cannot qualify, right. especially with coronavirus and all these people being laid off. You just can't qualify because your job and all these other things. And the third way, so we got cash, we got credit. And the third way, which is the most popular way that I think, or the smartest way to do it is the knowledge. Get the knowledge. Because if you've got the knowledge, you'll know how to leverage that cash and that credit to get the maximum output or the maximum uh, benefit for whatever you're dealing with as far as real estate. So I'm a big advocate of knowing what you're doing. And if they don't know what they're doing, they got a bunch of money, they can lose that cash. They can destroy their credit and everything else. So focus on getting that knowledge up first. That's what I say dropping major major nuggets major nuggets so here's a question now you're you're primarily in the st louis area right uh it, do you do any business outside of your area or you, you strictly focus on your area so yeah we market exclusively in the st louis missouri area missouri side specifically we do get leads in the illinois side and i have done deals in other markets virtually wholesale deals but uh, we do not market in other deal other areas right now i'm thinking about going into another market but Right now, I'm just uh, refining the systems and stuff to make sure that everything is clean as far as dominating this market. Because we're in a great market in St. Louis. A lot of people don't know that. I mean, I, I got a house on the contract right now for 12000 you know. Right. So, you know, when you're doing them kind of numbers, it's like, eh, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's easy. You can either buy it, do whatever you want to do with it, when you, you can buy houses for that. Matter of fact, we just did a deal in East St. Louis where the house on the contract for 2000 <laughs> So, you know what I mean? You know, it do need some work, but you can live in it. It's livable, but it needs work, handyman type stuff. But, you know, when you start looking at the real big picture, I'm like, these Midwest markets, a lot of people sleep on them that, you Man. know, I'll go to California and pay 400000 for a house. You a damn fool. I'll tell somebody, do not go give nobody 400000 for no house out in California. Uh, you can come right here in the Midwest and buy about 30, 40 houses hey. with the same money. Same money. <laughs>
<laughs> Listen, I was I, I, in the consultation. That was the exact thing I was saying. You know, so people were asking. You know, she was asking me about investing in Atlanta, and I said, "Well, for me, my money, you know, is going to the Midwest. You know, I'm actually liquidating a couple properties here in Georgia to go to invest in the Midwest um, because I'm I'm from Detroit. So those that return on investment, you know, of course." Crazy. You know, buy a, a slightly well, a lot less expensive property and still get the same type of rent on a monthly basis, which your ROI has increased significantly. You, know? you can buy a house for twenty five thousand, don't really need to do nothing to it, and get nine hundred a month of rent. Yes, yes, that's what I'm. That's what I've been saying. So or more, depending on if you're doing Section Eight and all that other stuff. I don't do Section Eight, but you know, some places I've heard they're doing three bedrooms, twelve hundred, thirteen hundred bucks a month, where the rental market is less than that. Yeah. And then not to mention, not to mention you buy, you know, a, a multifamily, you know, a, a duplex or a quad or something like that, you know, and still get the same rent if it's a two or three bedroom per unit, you know. So I wholesale duplexes for 40,000. Looking back on it like, damn, that was only 40,000 for a whole <laughs> duplex, two family, three bedroom, two bath on each side. Now these big ones, now these ain't no little baby stuff. I'm talking about whole houses basically, you know, <laughs> up under one roof. <laughs> you know, with a two and three and four car garages, you know, we got some nice houses here, you know, yeah. that make plenty of money. So, you know, that's why I say go where the money's at, you know, follow the money. Don't just be caught up in all oh, well, I'm in Florida or oh, I'm in New York or I'm in California. One of these highly competitive markets, your, your money can go so much further in another place. Just being honest. Absolutely. Absolutely. Listen, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to have to take a trip, man, and meet you. I'm going to bring my mask and, 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 you know, my, my, uh, my PPP, my PPE suit, you know, but I got to come to St. Louis to see what's going on there as well. Um, oh, come on through. We, we, we'll show you around. You'll be like, oh, man, I don't know if I want to buy over here a little rough. But hey, them rough areas make good money, too, though. You know, people got to, you know, that's the thing, too, when you're thinking about real estate. A lot of people say, oh, I wouldn't live there. You don't have to live there as long as somebody else will. Yes, yes, yes. Somebody was asking me that because I do, I do stuff in Detroit, you know, some areas in Detroit. You know, um, some areas that I grew up in, you know, I still look over my back when I when I drive down the streets there. <laughs> Most definitely, you know, in, in these areas, especially like in this market of St. Louis, we're block for block. You can go three blocks north, you in the hood. Right. Back right. south, you like, damn, this is a whole other town. It's the same place. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so, and that's the thing, man, you know, and of course, in those areas, you know, some people, somebody's going to live there. You know, if it's a house there, Somebody's gonna live there, you know, and that somebody that lives there is gonna have to pay either rent or mortgage or whatever it is they choose to pay in those areas. You know, somebody's gonna pay for it, you know. So why not you have, have housing? You gotta have housing, whether it's living in a trailer, whether it's living in a house, a duplex, an apartment, town home. It don't matter. Everybody gotta live somewhere. Everybody gotta work somewhere. And that's why I say learn real estate. I've even been saying something lately that's kind of controversial. Drop out of school and go learn real estate. Just drop out. I don't care what you're studying right now. Just drop out and go learn real estate. It, it, that's how powerful this stuff is. I mean, it's uh, listen, life. I, I will, I will uh, openly endorse that, but I will not deny that as well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the amount of it ain't even about just the money. It's the freedom. You know, when you got your time back, time is your most valuable asset. If you can have 20 or 30 properties paying you cash for month after month after month, whether you go to work or not, and you're getting the tax benefit of the, de the depreciation, the appreciation, and yeah. all the other benefits of owning a home, owning multiple homes, and designating yourself as a professional real estate investor, I mean, the doors are just so wide open. You don't pay no taxes. You can be like number 45. Don't pay no tax. No tax. <laughs> no tax. Why people hate no, man. You don't pay no taxes. Well, that's your thumb fault for not figuring out how he did it. I'll be asking, how the hell did he do it? Right. Come on, right, right. Let it's me see what he did. Let me, let me copy. Don't hit the game. <laughs> that's right. Let me copy. Like you said earlier, you want to copy. It's okay to be a copycat as long as you copy the right cat. Right cat. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> so that's why I say, you know, ain't, ain't no shame in the game. You know, I mean, I learned it from everybody. People you like, dislike, it don't matter. All that stuff, throw that emotion stuff to the side. Better yeah. yourself, put your mind strong, and step up to the plate and be great. Real stuff, man. Real stuff. You know, funny, funny story. You know, I'm going to share this. Uh, you know, with all the controversy that's going on, I have started reading the book. Um, I, I got the book years ago, like even like when it came out, but I just started reading it. Um, the book, Why We Want You to Be Rich by Donald Trump and Robert Kiyosaki. Um, two people who are controversial, controversial in, the, in you know, what we're doing right now. But I was curious, like, how do they think about, how, you know, doing what they do? 
and so much information in that book man it's like you know even now thinking the way they're doing the things that they're doing the information that's in that book is kind of applicable to how they're doing business aside from the emotions and the the attitudes and all that listen i can't i can't leave a legacy for my family because my feelings hurt <laughs> yeah f your feelings no <laughs> i ain't gonna say the whole word but that's what it is f your feelings and i never get into the emotional oh, yeah. well, they don't like yeah. me. i don't care if you like me or not you're gonna respect me because i'm gonna own it Absolutely. see ownership gives you that f you money when you own some stuff and control some stuff, it changes up your perspective on life in general. And we always got to go big and borrow. Hey, yeah, man, you didn't give me a job. You give me a chance. Please, uh, Master Boss, we sick. No, I ain't doing that junk, man. This is time to step up to the plate and be a man. Absolutely. You know, somebody got to man up. Us men especially got to man up, you know, because our woman needs our help and we need the help of our woman. So that's what I say, you know, step up and do what we're supposed to do to change the narrative and cut that 400-year head start in half man bruh real stuff real stuff man and and you know and it's it's all about you know like you said from the very beginning man, when when people don't understand uh, uh what we talk about personal development and mindset and having that mindset shift you know that that is the very first thing and anything that i teach my students the first thing we got to deal with is mindset mm. you know because you have some people that first of all they don't believe that they can accomplish the things that they see other people accomplish right mm. They've already set themselves up for failure because it's like this person has done this. I can't do that. I used to have that mindset. I used to think like, oh, these people are making all this money. You know, I grew up in the hood. That's not going to happen for me. Mm -hmm. I can read the same books that they read. You know, now it was illegal for us to read hundreds of years ago, but right. more, it's more and more legal now and less of us want to do it. <laughs> They got us all twisted up, locked in a box at a lower level of a real life monopoly game. So we got to get into the game, get up a piece, throw the dice, move to the next thing, pass, go, collect our $200 and keep it moving. We got to get into the game. And a lot of us are not playing the game. We're playing the game on the wrong side of it where we're just, like I say, begging for an opportunity. In fact, when I was down in uh, what was it, Memphis, Tennessee, I went to the uh, Dr. King Memorial like area or whatever. Right. And so I'm looking at some of the stuff and they're holding up these signs talking about some we demand a job. And I'm like, damn, demand a job? How are you going to demand a job? You can't make nobody give you a job. Right. Mindset screwed up. You can't do that. That's not the way things work. That's not real. And it's still kind of sad that we still almost fighting that same thing 50 years later. And this was stuff in the 60s. You know how they show right. like the little, the little signs and the little men or mannequins or whatever it was down yeah. there at the place. And I'm like, that is crazy that we still mentally stuck in this trap today we got to break those chains break those shackles and, and free our mind and step up to the plate and engage in this information age because there's no excuse anymore you know we've had excuses in the past and i'm not going to say it's easy or that everybody uh is going to make it simple through you know make it through this thing simply there's a lot of ways to do this stuff but it first starts getting that mindset right getting that education level up and actually taking action on what we learn if we don't do that we're going to be we're going to be locked at the bottom of this game forever real stuff real stuff Man, listen, I want to get into, you know, you, you talked about being a serial entrepreneur and you got so many other different things that you got going on to create streams of income. Can you kind of enlighten us on what, what some of those other things you got going on are? Yeah, most definitely. So I'm an auctioneer. So 25 and I, 35 and I, 45 and I sold. So I do auctions. I, okay. I do a resale. <laughs> I have a, a store here in St. Louis with over 10,000 items for sale, furniture, collectibles, antiques, all type of different stuff. Um, I do my, you know, real estate coaching and stuff like that as well. I actually do. Uh, I'm actually building an app right now. Getting the app built should be ready in about 40 days or so. We're actually building an app called Pinpoint Assist. It'll help people when they're putting out banded signs and things like that or signs and marketing to actually help them pinpoint and know exactly where their marketing is being put versus somebody you say, here, go put these signs out and they don't put them out and you don't know where they're at. Right. They actually use the app, take a picture of it, and it actually tells you a timestamp and all that type of stuff. So you can actually track and control your marketing from wherever you are, whether it's virtually in the market, whether it's in your home state market. So that's called Pinpoint Assist. That's the app that's coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, we also do skip tracing. We got a skip tracing service called WokeSkipTracing.com. Uh, we do skip tracing for people for as low as 15 cents per match, not per search per match you know you only pay for what we find if there's no name or uh, email address or no uh, phone number we don't even uh, charge it so you know we have multiple streams like that I do a lot of affiliate marketing and things like that as well I sell you know all these different hats I do private label products where you actually create products where you can actually you know 
get your UPC codes, barcodes, all that type of stuff. Get it on store shelves, sell it on Amazon, eBay, Facebook, Craigslist, offer up, let go, you name it. We sell stuff everywhere. Like I said, got over 10,000 items for sale. I know that seemed like a lot, but that's really, you know, that's at the lower level. We usually really have a lot more than that, but I just like to use that number just to give an idea, but it's more than that. Wow. Products, services, all that type of stuff. Like I said, the coaching program and stuff as well. So that's why I always just try to, you know, provide value and see how I can actually add value to other people, whether it's through a service or a product. So that's what we do. Great stuff, man. Great stuff. And I got to, you know, I got to, uh, here's, here's where, here's where the, the stealing your tagline comes into place. You know, the more you stay woke, the less you'll stay broke. <laughs> that's right. You better be woke or you'll wind up broke. Wind up broke. <laughs> but that's great stuff though, man. And that, and that's the thing a lot of people miss and do, and you know, doing real estate, real estate in, in many cases. And you know what people don't get, it's a, it's a means to an end. You know, it's a way, to, of course, to be able to get money and make money and things like that. But you got to be wise enough to parlay that into other streams to generate money from. You know, so you know, I yeah, my real estate funds other endeavors. You know, you might not like real estate like that, but it can fuel your passion in life. Whether you say, "Oh, I want to go be in a rock band," or "Oh, I want to go," you know, wherever to Paris or wherever you want to do in your life, mm -hmm. real estate can fund that. You know, that's just a stepping stone to get you, you know, wholesaling itself is a stepping stone to get you to the other level to where you can get into some of this passive income. And that's where I really advocate to try to keep the houses. So when, back to your question you asked a little bit earlier, I'm always looking for a way to stay in the deal because you'll make more money on the house staying in a deal than you ever will wholesaling it, flipping it or any of that other stuff. So I don't even flip property at all. I try to keep it or maybe wholesale it if I want to. You know, one of my mentors even said, if you ain't making at least $40,000 in profit, you shouldn't be flipping property no way. There's people flipping property about, oh, I made 10 grand. Well, you could have just wholesale and got 10 grand. That ain't making no money for real, for the time, energy, effort, and dealing with contractors and all that stuff. I mean, I don't know if you flip property or not, but that can be a dang old headache. It is. I do, and it is. <laughs> I, will, I will not sugarcoat it at all. It is. You know, as a result, and, and that's the thing, that's where real life real estate investing was born, man, because, you know, so many people look at, you know, they watch the TV shows and they look at, oh, they made this amount of money on it, but they don't tell you from A to Z, all of the things that are involved, you know, it costs to buy it and it costs to sell a house in many cases. And a lot of people don't look at those numbers and they miss all of the things that are involved. So what, what, what we talk about real life real estate situations and we bring real life real estate solutions, you know, because it's important for people to understand these things. Um, we got somebody on that says, uh, I like this guy's real estate knowledge. As a former real estate agent, I agree with a lot of what he's saying. Um, talk that talk. <laughs> I want to learn how to buy using other people's money. Um, and somebody asked, what is his contact? And we're definitely going to be able to share. We're going to definitely share that information. So stick around. Actually, you know what? We're coming up on time. So what I want to do before we, you know, we got to, I, I definitely want to get into some more stuff. If you got time, you, you know, if you're okay with sharing. Come on with it. Drop something heavy on them. Definitely. <laughs> Let's tell the, tell the folks, first of all, how can they get in contact with you? And, and do you got anything going on right now that folks can get involved in? Yeah, so most definitely. Um, I'm real easy to find on all social media at Chris Monroe, STL. That's Snapchat, that's Twitter, that's Instagram, that's Facebook, that's YouTube, that's TikTok, hip hop, you don't stop, rocking to the bang, bang, biggity bop, all of that at Chris Monroe, STL, uh, for my real estate training, coaching, things like that. I have over 200 and, I don't know, 200 plus YouTube videos on my YouTube channel at Chris Monroe, STL, or you can go right on to my website, wokerealestate.com, W-O-K-E, wokerealestate.com, that's the website for all of the real estate uh training uh go through you can actually get contracts there get cool gear like these i buy houses has different colors whatever you want to do you know all of everything as far as me is right there woke real estate.com that's what i would tell people to do that and also check out that facebook group we got the facebook group called woke real estate investing uh facebook it's a creative group to get around like-minded people that's actually doing deals going through deals going through the trials and tribulations sharing their successes sharing their failures all that different stuff you want to get around like-minded people like we said earlier in the stream here you know so you can actually you know if you talk to this to somebody don't know what you're talking about it don't make sense but if you get around other like-minded individuals you can share those experiences and they can give you some pointers or you know help you out in situations that are similar that you may come across that i might have come across you know maybe a month ago a year ago or whatever you know 
because you know you want to share this knowledge i'm always about sharing the knowledge because i don't own it you know i learned it from somewhere and i learned a lot of stuff from just trial and error but you know until we put it out into the universe and help other people what good is it real stuff real stuff man listen 100 percent, man 100 percent uh so listen i, I want to talk a little bit more about <clears throat> Yeah, because I watched some videos of you actually going to, I think the storage units where they were selling things there. Now, were you the auctioneer there, or were you there to buy things from there? I was at those to buy. I bought over three hundred storage lockers. I don't know if you saw like a uh, storage wars when they open up the thing and say, "Yeah, everybody, look in here and see what you see," and then we're gonna bid on it. Uh -huh. Those I bought over three hundred of those in my life, and you know, wow. so I've learned how to sell just about everything from furniture, collectibles, antiques jewelry i mean you name it i mean you know you can find anything in somebody's storage locker so when i was showing those streams i was actually at a storage auction uh place matter of fact they got one coming up here in about a week or august 4th or something like that i think is the next one after the corona they're going back to action baby so i'm going in and buy some of these uh you know we buy real estate we buy stuff buy and sell stuff flipping stuff you know it ain't never going nowhere you know that's one of the oldest professions you know buy and sell buy low sell high ain't doing nothing special you know buy for a dollar sell it for two dollars whatever you know keep it moving and i bought some lockers that actually have been pretty good one of my best lockers i bought um this was a huge locker you know this is a lot of stuff i was like man that's a lot of stuff in there i don't even know if i can handle it but the stuff was in good condition it was all just dusty so they opened up the locker and the auctioneer starts off all right we got a fifty dollars anybody fifty all right 75 i got 75 and i said 400 i jumped the bid Wow. 400 thinking that, oh, yeah, they're going to beat me out because I only had about six or $700 in my pocket at the time. This was a few years ago. So mm -hmm. I said, 400. He's like, 400 going once, 400 going twice. So I said, ooh. So I won the locker. Now, this was uh, for, the, for everything in the locker. Everything in the locker. Man, this locker man. had about six bedrooms. You, man. <laughs> so this locker had about six bedrooms worth of furniture, an wow. oven, refrigerator, two refrigerators. Um, you know, it had a I lot of stuff know, right there. <laughs> you telling me I sold the oven the next day for 350 the right. very next day. Like I ain't even, you know, the very next day. Yeah. Paid 400 for the locker, had about $150 or so in moving expenses. I had to go rent a truck. I had to go mm. get the 26 foot truck from U Haul. So I had to go rent a truck, haul all this stuff back, and start selling. So that, you know, five or $600 investment brought back about $8,000. Wow. Wow. Brought back about eight thousand dollars, and I mean that thing was that gift just kept on giving and giving and giving because it was stuff, and it don't matter what you're selling for at that point because it's like it's pure profit. I ain't in it for nothing but space at this time, exactly. you know. So you know, I, I spent that money, and that was a really good deal on it. And I've even bought lockers for five dollars that came back with over five hundred dollars worth of stuff. So I mean, it's a numbers game, just like wholesaling. So even when I came into re real estate. I started noticing, you know, all oh, this thirty percent discounts. I'm like, I'm used to making ten to twenty times my money. Everybody right. else about thirty percent. I'm like, you know, that's cool in real estate, but I'm used <laughs> to making big flips. Like, you know, I bought this for five dollars and sold it for a hundred type deal. That's not nothing that's out of my mind because I've done it many, many times. You right. know, so especially with the storage auction business, you know, the sky isn't even the limit. You know, those beds and stuff, people buy that stuff because mm -hmm. there's people sleeping on floors, couches, living room sets, bedroom sets. Um, wow all types of stuff i like furniture because the markup is so good you yeah, know yeah you know one little sofa said that you got for free i mean that's one thing too a strategy people can do as well you can get something for free off crazy put it right back up online and sell it and make money for it i, I did know. that some time ago too <laughs> i mean there's so many hustles out here so i'm unemployable at this point i haven't yeah. had a job since 2011. so yeah. i haven't had a job in almost 10 years so you know I, i'm just unemployable at this time and so like you know i had to learn some hustles learn some strategies so navigating over into real estate it was just so much easier for me because i already had the mindset that i know buy low sell high so i'm like all i gotta do now is put it on paper i ain't even gotta move nothing i ain't gotta coordinate nothing just talk some talk learn some lingo oh hell i can do that <laughs> <laughs> so that's why it was a little bit easier for me moving over into real estate in general from the resale business so i came from the resale business right 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 and that's you know that's the thing like it's a it's again back to mindset back to mindset you know you look at look at many things that we do and most of what most of what people that get involved in our business do is they don't look at the you know people say i don't want to be a salesman most people are afraid of having a conversation with people like if you're that that's the that's something that you are reserved about you're not going to be as successful as you want to be in this business because 90 percent of what we do is having a conversation you see what I mean? The other ten percent is building a relationship in order to get to the conversation, but you know, ninety percent of it is having a conversation, whether it be with the seller, 
um, you know, of course, even having cold callers call, you still got to do the follow up to be able to have a conversation to get the contract to close the deal. You know, um, and that's I mean, I've grown to get other people to do that part at least as well, you know, but still some, you know, I even got to talk to the people that's talking to the people that's talking to the people. So somebody, exactly. somebody. <laughs> exactly. And uh, people that's ducking out of sales, you're hurting yourself. Just being honest, life yeah. is sales. At all times, you're either selling or you're being sold at all times. Grant yeah. Cardone book, Sell or Be Sold. Good Somebody book for you, know. man. Um, you know, and that's true. You're always being sold. Either either right now, I'm selling you something or you're going to sell me something. Either way it go. Whether you're trying to persuade somebody to believe what you believe, whether you're selling a product, whether you're selling a service, you're selling or being sold at all times. You just got to know where your position is at that time. Are you being sold to? Real stuff, real stuff. All right, two, two questions, man. I'm going to let you get out of here because I know there's a whole lot of money you got to go get, so I don't want to keep you from it. Um, tell us who are some of your mentors and tell us some of the books that you've read to get to the point of where you are now. So yeah, as far as books, I'm not really an avid reader. You wouldn't believe that. I've watched about 500 videos. This is okay. the video session. Right. You know, right. Somebody go back on this thing here, pick up nuggets out of it and go implement it. So yeah. I watched probably, probably about 500 videos. Um, I, when I first came into real estate, I kind of studied some of uh, King Kong. I don't know if you know about him. Kong from Wholesale to Millions. Uh, Cause he, he, you know, that's why I got the concept of virtual from him. Cause I'm like virtual, he doing $250,000 a month, virtual wholesaling and never go see the buyer, never go see the seller, never go yeah. see the house. I want to copy that guy. So yeah. I want to learn some of his strategies and stuff. Um, I learned a lot from Ryan Legrand was another person, you know, when it comes to creative strategies, mm -hmm. um, you know, I learned from everybody. You know what I mean? A fool could tell you something you didn't know, like I said earlier. So I learned from everybody. I actually go in, say this, does this make sense and implement it. You know, I don't want to just, learn a bunch of information and never take action on it i want to learn it and go apply it Definitely. learn it and go apply it's so powerful and if nobody you know they can watch these videos like even my videos i have over 200 videos on my channel a lot of people go watch it and never take action on it mm -hmm. i tell them you need to start watching videos go start taking action i don't yeah. want to hear no more oh well i was watching more videos are you talking to some sellers right are you talking to some buyers are you talking to some people are you navigating these muddy waters of the real estate world are yeah. you getting out here talking to some people how many people have you talked to today in fact i'm gonna add to that how many problems have you solved for other people today? Man. you gotta yeah. solve some problems add some influence add some uh something to the to the mix you know versus being a consumer all the time all we do is consume mm -hmm. don't be a consumer be a producer as well the producer versus the consumer mindset big on being a producer but those are some of the people I look at. Um, I have read a couple of books. Like I said, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, audio book. Um, another yeah. good book is uh, The Less I Do, The More I Make. Yes, I yes, yes, right yes. yes. Um, what else we got here? A um, couple other things. Like I said, I'm big on uh, podcasts, big on audio books, big on YouTube videos. There's no excuse. You can play this stuff in your radio, in your vehicle, while you're driving down the street, turn off that junk that they programming you with on the radio, telling you what to do, who to vote for, and who to like and not like. I don't listen to that crap. Right. Fill this brain up with some information so you can change your life. Man, listen. Thank you, brother, for being uh, being on the show today. Man, listen, I'm going to go back and watch this video several times as well. Um, you know, not, not just for the purpose of repurposing it, but of course, you know, I get a chance to watch it over and over again to learn different things. Um, but listen, I'm glad you came on today, man. I'm glad we were able to get you to come on and share your knowledge your wisdom and information and insight. Um, and, and listen, I'm, I don't, don't think I'm joking. I'm coming to St. Louis. <laughs> I'm coming to St. Louis. I don't know when, you know, it might be in the next couple of weeks, next couple of months. Um, but definitely we'll be reaching out, man, to come and set up some things, you know, because I want to go with you on that on that uh, uh, storage locker uh, tour that you go on, you know, to take. Oh, uh, yeah. They, they come up all the time. You know, that, that, and that's the thing, though. You know, a lot of people don't realize how much stuff we have as Americans. That storage auction thing is one little slivet, like this yeah. very little. I do estate sales. I don't know if you know about those, where you can actually go yeah. to people's house and they sell out all the furniture and everything, right. whatever's in the house, everything must go because they sold the house. I've actually bought three houses from estate sales. Talk to the person, say, yeah, y'all selling the house too? Yeah, we'll sell it because it's like I need a little work. Bought the house from them. Crazy, ain't it? Right. Estate sales, estate auctions, where they actually go and auction through the house. So, I mean, there's so many things, garage sales, yard sales. There's so much stuff in our garage, in our lives, that we don't even realize that we have as Americans. I don't know if it's like this everywhere in the world, but we have too much stuff. We do. We and do. when you die, you can't take it with you. Absolutely. Why you got so much stuff? 
<laughs> it don't even be worth nothing. At least have real estate, something that you can pass on, something that's going to keep or retain or ex increase its value. Stuff that don't have value, like a bunch of clothes, a bunch of shoes. Oh, yeah, I got the new Jordan. Yeah, that keep value. Don't get me wrong. If, it, if you ain't flipping it to make some money off of it or gain some, don't be buying that junk. Get something that uh, assets, something that's going to add value to your life, add value to your family, and add value to your situation. That's what I say. Real stuff. Folks, listen, you heard it from the man himself. Stay woke so you won't get so you won't be broke. I'm gonna mess it up a couple of times. I'm gonna get it right eventually. <laughs> Stay woke so you don't wind up broke. And I'm gonna repeat my name again. It's Chris Monroe, the student master teacher, Mr. I Stay Woke. That's right. So that's how we're gonna do it. And uh, like I say, follow me on all social media at Chris Monroe STL. Real easy to find, especially on Instagram. Get on that Instagram. I put a lot of good content on there where I actually get on the phone live with sellers and things like that. And you can get everything in real time and get some real experience from, you know, and step into my shoes and feel like you're right there with me through the trials and tribulations. Matter of fact, one of the videos we just did the other day, uh, it was a seller trying to back out of a uh, contract. We got it under contract. We locked in a buyer on a wholesale deal and then a seller trying to back out. So we actually got the phone call right now on my IG page at Chris Monroe STL, a full phone call with him and all the junk he was throwing my way and how I handled it. A lot of people were like, man, you got a lot of patience. You got to, man. You can't let nobody shake you up. Right, right. Especially in this game because they're going to definitely try you. They're going to definitely try you. Uh, we got another uh, comment. Uh, she says, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, knowledge and action. Real stuff, real stuff. Um, again, thank you, sir. Uh, stick around because we definitely gonna talk after. But I want to thank the folks that um, you know are watching today. Again, you know this is Mr. Chris Monroe. Definitely go and follow him on all social media. Uh, Chris Monroe STL, right? Want to make sure I got that That's right. right. To make it easy for everybody. Even matter of fact, you can even go to chrismonroestl.com. See, I, I don't make finding me is never gonna be a problem. <laughs> What was the other site you gave? Uh, uh, Stay woke or woke, woke real estate? Uh, woke real estate dot com. Woke real estate dot com. All the real estate stuff is there. Contracts, cool gear, coaching, uh, videos, uh, interviews, all type of stuff where you can indulge and learn and fill your brain until you almost go insane. Yeah. <laughs> Great stuff, Mr. Monroe. Listen, thank you again for being a part of the show today. Uh, thank you for sharing your knowledge and your wisdom and your insight. It's always a pleasure to have folks like you on the show, man, to be able to help folks expand outside of the things that they see on a regular basis. So, folks, thank you for joining us. This has been the Real Life Real Estate Investing Show, where we talk about real life real estate situations, where we bring you real life real estate solutions. Don't forget to join us here next week, where we're going to have uh, my girl, my sister, Miss Jackie Jackson. She's going to be talking about uh, tax lien investing. She's going to be talking about tax overages, a whole bunch of stuff as it relates to tax investing. Uh, so stick around, you know, or actually meet us here next week. Same time, same channel. Thank you for watching. We look forward to seeing Before you. Before you go. Yes, sir. Go ahead. They got to give this video a thumbs up. Give it a like and give it a share. Share it out. Let people Absolutely. know that you came in. Please share. Please share. Please, you know, we, we didn't get as many likes as we normally get, but uh, please like it and please share it. And uh, we tag somebody, tag a friend, tag somebody, share it. Absolutely. 